Hi, the spot you've just seen is something that you would normally see produced in a facility like this. However, in this case, it wasn't. Uh, what we've done is we've used what we call Silicon Studio products, a combination of SGI hardware and software to produce this spot. What you're going to see over the next few minutes and meet are the creative team and the guys who put this production together. So enjoy seeing how we've made the Silicon Studio spot. We wanted to accomplish a number of things with this video. We wanted to show that once you have an SGI machine, you have a range of creative tools at your disposal. There's a lot of great paint programs, 2D animation programs, 3D programs, uh, a real big variety of stuff to work with. Um, and I think it's important that you know each one of these programs is a solution in itself, but if you combine two or three of them, you've really got an amazing amount of potential. Uh, a 3D program combined with a 2D animation program, and there's literally nothing you can't do. So, so we have the hole, the lightning. This is our version of the Silicon Studio. This is a rural setting, and this is the what we refer to as the war room. Dave here is working on the 3D station. It's an Indigo Elan. Jeff here is doing the compositing on the Onyx Reality Engine. He's using Flame currently, and we're working on the uh, compositing sequence. Over here is the Indigo 2 that we've been using to do most of the audio editing as well as the video editing. So Roger would come over with the digital audio track and we'd uh, take it from there on the Indigo 2. And the Indie was used with Photoshop to create some mats as well as some video editing. And then here we had the Onyx Reality Engine which was really the workhorse where we did a lot of the intense rendering and stored all of our video clips online all the time. Everything we're trying to do here is done on SGI hardware. So we created models of an Indy, an Indigo, an Indigo 2, and a Reality Engine and stuck them in this wonderful smoky uh, environment which we established and then zoomed through. To, to build that stuff, it's very easy to come into a program like Alias and actually see, to, to build the surfaces and the shapes and actually interactively visualize what you're working with. It's really nice to be able to spin around your object and see it from all sides uh, as you're building it and make sure it looks okay and then to, to, to be able to stop and see it actually become shaded right before your eyes is really great. I also use Wavefront uh, to build this robot which we use in the end sequence and it's really great to be able to put the models together in Wavefront's visualizer and then bring those models into Kinemation which is their uh, inverse kinematics package where you can apply all these uh, keyframes for character animation very quickly and easily. Uh, so for the audio sequence, we wanted to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we recorded audio riffs into the Sonic Solution system, and I actually play a trumpet riff that we sort of lip sync to over here. So what I've got is a trumpet that I built in Softimage, and it has this great feature where you're, a, you're able to put a lattice around the model. And now I can take points on that, so that lattice and pull them around, and it distorts the model of the trumpet bell in a very rubbery type fashion. So then it's a simple matter of taking different sets of these points and applying keyframes to them so that it can animate the shape and the squishiness of the trumpet. This particular program is Alias Animator, and uh, it's a great program for being able to build complex surfaces, just about anything you'd want to. Right now I'm taking two little lonely curves sitting out in space and just connecting them together with what's called a patch. Uh, so not only do I have a surface now between those curves, but I could actually go in and even change the makeup of that surface. Like I can make it very rubbery and stretch out parts of it, uh, do all sorts of wonderful things with it. What I was just playing with is actually a copy of the windshield of this big spaceship. It starts out on a flat plane. In the span of a second, he swings around to face the camera. Then he starts flying out towards us, and as he's flying, the wings start flapping. A gear starts rotating on the back and he basically comes right in our face and goes over our shoulder. The graphic sequence incorporates moving textures, geometric shapes, and text. Here's how it was built. The background was created by using various sources, such as time-lapse clouds, to create high cons. These high cons were used to shade a very simple graphic sweep. The next layer is comprised of geometric shapes. Again, various simple sweeps, paint box fills, were used with 
matte sources and combined over the background. The next layer incorporates the time-lapse clouds again. This time we color corrected them so they have a different feel. We use another matte source to create this third layer. Finally, text is composited over the whole thing. Again, a simple paint box fill and a mat are used to produce the final. In creating the editing sequence, we first and foremost wanted to convey the message that there were a number of editing applications to choose from on the SGI platform, like Avid's Media Suite Pro and, in this case, Flint. To do that, we chose a film strip in a montage sequence. We first digitized over 8,000 frames of video using the Acom Workstation disk in integrated video. We transferred the frames over to the Onyx Reality Engine, where we all had complete access to these frames for the duration of the project. Dave would use them for creating texture maps, Jeff would be using them to create 2D animations and paint, and I would be rotoscoping. Here's an example of how we would use Flint to perform an edit. I simply select the final frame of my first clip here in the countdown sequence, followed by the final frame in my second clip here, the bridge sequence. I've just performed an edit. I can now play this down with the scratch track of audio. There's my edit. The great thing about Flint is this is just one of the six modules. I have all the processing effects capability that I have on the Flame system, and this is running on the Indigo 2, which takes advantage of the built-in audio hardware. I composed the music in my home MIDI studio, and then I mastered it, mixed it down to this DAT tape. Um, and I can take the DAT tape, plug it into one of the Silicon Graphics systems, and read that file into the system in digital format. From then on, I can deal with that sound inside the system along with the video. This program is called Datman, this allows me to read what's on this DAT tape and place it into memory in a file. Just play a little bit of that. So using that process, I recorded the whole soundtrack in. Then I used a program called Sound Editor, which allows us to both view the waveforms of the sound and uh, play it back and make specific cuts or edits. At the same time, on the same platform, I can have the, um, the visuals running as well. And we can play the music. So using these tools, I can then decide where the music needs to be cut uh, to match up with the visuals, because I can see the visuals and I have the music here as well as the, uh, the editing tool for that. And to make an edit, I simply uh, mark a section just as I would with a word processor and uh, hit the edit command for cutting and that section is gone now the music we've cut about about two seconds out of that so we brought audio into the indigo 2 in three various ways first off was the dat that roger pointed out second now i'm using the aware sound effects i have over seven hours of audio digital audio on this one cd and the third way is over the network directly from the mac it's simply drag and drop the audio file onto the SGI icon and you have your audio file here in a matter of seconds. The Space Invader type scene is a pretty good example of compositing. It's created by blending a lot of different elements from a lot of different sources. The background, for example, started off as a stock footage shot. I was able to take all the camera shake out of the, uh, out of the footage, color correct it and lengthen it to the correct length to produce this background. Some of the elements in the scene were actually 3D. For instance, the moon, these buildings, and this little plane that flies out of the building here were created in, uh, in 3D programs. Uh, one of the things I like about this platform is that you're able to write files to disk with something called an alpha channel. An alpha channel is basically a mat that's embedded in the picture file. So instead of, instead of having to deal with a separate mat and a separate fill, you deal with one file that's got both. That cuts down uh, the time it takes to composite things. It also take, cuts down the amount of storage space that you need to work with. The uh, UFO 
is a blue screen element, just a model shot against blue screen. The explosions, again, are stock footage. These were composited over the scene with something called a non-additive mix. And the photon blast is just a very simple paint element that was created in flame with its mat. And there it is. Uh, beyond addressing the main areas of 3D paint, compositing, editing, and audio, uh, we also wanted to, to have some fun with the software and sort of show the range of creative freedom you have. So the end section is, is really about that, about pushing the tools and seeing how far you can go with them. I, I think what sums up the Silicon Studio concept uh, and why we put in the tagline, if you can dream it, you can do it, uh, is that once you have an SGI machine and some third-party software, you should be able to create pretty much anything you can visualize or dream of.